On this week's video, I'm going to be doing a very highly requested character analysis on none other than Ishin Kurosaki, or as he was known 20 years ago, Ishin Shiba. He is the father of our protagonist Ichigo, and once upon a time, he used to be a Shinigami who resided within the Soul Society, holding the position of the former captain of the 10th Division, as well as the head of the noble Shiba clan. Everything had changed for the character of Ishin when he encountered his Quincy soulmate, Masaki Kurosaki. He had given up his powers and his life as a Shinigami in order to suppress the hollow that had taken residence within Masaki. This hollow named White was eventually transferred to their firstborn Ichigo. And during the Soul Society arc, after Ichigo attains Bankai, the powers of the inner hollow grew too much for Ishin's powers to suppress. This had broken the tie that Ishin had to the hollow White, thus leading to Ishin's powers returning to him while Ichigo was facing off against Byakuya. And this is the reason why we see Ishin immediately after this as a Shinigami in chapter 186, where he faces off against the Grand Fisher who was just recently transformed into an Aranka. Now, as a character, Ishin is one of the most mysterious and secretive characters to feature within Bleach. The truth about his character and his circumstances are unveiled to us gradually as the story progresses. Now, I briefly spoke about the sacrifice that he makes in relation to Masaki, but there are several other characters who have an important bond with Ishin, of which include Ryuken and the love-hate friendship that they share, as well as the friendship that he has with Kisuke Urahara, the man who serves as the ultimate source of help within the story of Bleach. Ishin and Urahara had worked together against Aizen during the fake Karakura Town arc, as well as working behind the scenes during the Fallbrink arc in order to restore Ichigo's powers. Ishin, within the current timeline of the story, is working as a medical doctor as he runs a clinic from his own home. He shares the same occupation as his frenemy Ryuken. It's quite interesting to see the changing career from being a Shinigami to a doctor. So with the basic premise of his character introduced, let's now dive into the specifics of his character and understand how Kubo had mainly utilized this character as a tool of which shadowing, proving that he had planned the story out from the very beginning. Before the video begins, only 20% of the people who actually watch my content are subscribed to the channel. If you enjoy these videos, then subscribe and stick around for more content just like this. Now let's get back to the topic of the video. Ishin is one of the first characters who is introduced to us, as he makes his debut appearance within chapter 1 of the manga and in episode 1 of the anime. His appearance is that of a tall, middle-aged, muscular man, with his notable spiky black hair and his brown eyes. And who could forget his manly facial hair that even rivals Shunsui's stubble. Now when Ishin takes up his Shinigami form, he has a very unique appearance. As early as chapter 188, we see that he is wearing a tattered or ripped up captain's coat over his shoulder. It's fashioned in such a way that we are unable to see the actual division number on the coat. And it isn't until the Everything But The Rain flashback arc that we learn that Ishin was leading the 10th division, with Rangiku as his lieutenant and Hitsugaya as his third seated officer. Now the best way to describe Ishin's character in relation to his children would be full of energy and very goofy. He's constantly smiling, cracking jokes filling any awkward silences with his loud voice in his own desperate attempt to fill that void of a second parent, not wanting his children to feel like they are missing out on anything after the death of Masaki. This behaviour is in stark contrast to his personality as a captain of the Gotei 13, where he was generally carefree and very lazy, passing on his responsibilities to his subordinates. And it is for this reason that Rangiku was often very upset with him. Ishin did get very lucky because his third seated officer Hitsugaya used to do all of the paperwork for him, and even in chapter 500 and 29, he praises Hitsugaya by stating that he sees the future of the 10th division within him, which of course is a nod to Hitsugaya being a successor. The past of Ishin is explained to us during the Everything But The Rain flashback arc, which takes place between chapters 529 to 537. Chronologically, it takes place 20 years before the current timeline of Bleach. It is during this flashback that we learn about how Ishin's current circumstances came to be, including how he had lost his powers, as well as his first encounter with his soon-to-be wife, Masaki. Ishin had left for the world of the living to investigate some disappearances that Hitsugaya had informed him of. Against the wishes of Rangiku and Hitsugaya, he had gone to investigate alone. It is in chapter 530 within the world of the living that he had encountered the Hollow White. He quickly realizes that this is the creature who was responsible for the Shinigami disappearing over the last few weeks. Ishin expresses his surprise at the strange appearance of the Hollow, as it appears to be black in color. In addition to this, the creature's Hollow Hole appears to be covered also, but there is 
is no mistaking it. From his spiritual pressure alone, Ishin confirms that he is facing off against a hollow here. While fighting the creature, he is being observed by Aizen, Gin, and Tozen. From the onset of their fight, Ishin appears to be on the defensive as he tries to figure his opponent out. He is surprised that this hollow that he is facing off against is fighting like a Shinigami. We learn that this encounter between the hollow white and Ishin is taking place within Karakura Town, as it appears that Ishin has stepped out of his jurisdiction of Naruki City and entered Karakura Town, which is under the jurisdiction of Squad 13. When Ishin activates his Shikai and declares that he is going to kill the creature, he is cut down from behind by Aizen. Aizen conceals himself by using a cloak that insulates spiritual pressure, allowing him to blend into the background unnoticed. We learn that he had fashioned this cloak from the one that Urahara had worn during the Ten Back the Pendulum arc. Of course, thanks to Ishin's years of experience, he knows that he wasn't cut by the Hollow just now, immediately realizing that there is a traitor within the Gotei 13, and this individual is behind this strange creature that he is facing off against. At this point, the tide of the battle turns, as Ishin's wounds are too deep for him to focus his spiritual pressure in order for him to activate his Bankai. When the Hollow is about to fire a Saro at point blank range towards Ishin, he is saved by the arrival of Masaki. Wielding her Quincy bow, she gets the attention of the Hollow. She utilizes a very dangerous technique as she allows the Hollow to bite her shoulder, which gives her a perfect opportunity to fire an arrow right through its head, as she saves Ishin by defeating the Hollow White. But we come to learn later that her actions weren't without consequence. In Chapter 533, when Ishin returns to the Soul Society, in a captain's meeting, he delivers a report of what had happened to the head captain. Despite his actions being unauthorized, Ishin's actions had saved the lives of his fellow officers, as well as ensuring that any damage to the world of the living was kept to a minimum. But during his report, Ishin didn't mention that he was saved by Masaki. Through their first encounter, it is evident that he had taken a liking to her, so in a way, he had protected her here by not getting her involved. On an unrelated note, during this captain's meeting, you can see several other captains in the background, and it's quite fascinating to know about how things were when Ishin was a captain, as we can see Unahana and Byakuya in the background of one panel, as well as seeing captains Mayuri and Chunsui in another. This, of course, was 20 years ago, so I'd imagine not much has changed within the Gotei 13, aside from Hitsugaya taking up Ishin's position. Later, Ishin had returned to the world of the living without permission once again. He had encountered Ryuken and had saved him from a hollow. Ryuken blames Ishin for what has happened to Masaki. The hollow white wouldn't be consuming her from the inside if she didn't save him. As the two of them argued, the one who is well versed with issues of holification arrives. Urahara, not wanting to waste any time, tells the two of them to come with him, as he reveals to them the choices that they have when it comes to saving Masaki. Prior to these events, we know that Urahara had saved the Shinigami who were holified by Aizen during the Ten Back the Pendulum arc. We know that he wasn't able to completely reverse the holification, which is shown through the Vizards wielding hollow masks, and Urahara confirms that this is true for Masaki also, as in Chapter 535 he states that she will never be who she once was. He explains that she is undergoing holification, an uncontrollable technology where a hollow soul is poured into a normal soul, thus destroying the boundary that exists between the two of them. If left unchecked, the hollow will fuse with the subject, and the end result will be a monster with no sense of reason, similar to the state of the Shinigami who are holified during the Tenback the Pendulum arc. The final outcome of holification is the death of the original soul, as it performs soul suicide. The only way to counter this, as Urahara states, is to pour into that soul something that will counter the holification. Urahara had saved the Shinigami who were holified by Aizen by creating a vaccine that was made out of the light of a Quincy's arrow and a human soul. Through this method, he was able to successfully prevent the soul suicide of all of the Shinigami from the Ten Back the Pendulum arc. But the only way to save Masaki, who is a Quincy undergoing holification, is to utilize a power that is far stronger than that of a human soul. Urahara states that a strong conflicting power that will always be by her side must be used, and this will prevent her from holifying until the day that she dies. And this is where Ishin had sacrificed his Shinigami powers, and his soul was encased within a special Gigai, transforming him into an ordinary human. Here we learn that Shinigami are the opposite of Quincy's, and humans are the opposite of Hollows. Urahara explains that the choice that Ishin has to make is heavily unfavorable for him. Once he is in the Gigai, he will lose his Shinigami powers, and he will never be able to return to being a Shinigami again. Ryuken thinks to himself that there is no way that Ishin is going to accept these terms. There is nothing positive in it for him. The only way to save Masaki is to tie Ishin's Shinigami powers to her. Without a second thought, Ishin accepts these conditions, surprisingly to both Urahara and Ryuken. Ishin accepts that he is going to stop being a Shinigami and that he has to protect her for the rest of his life. He admits that he has doubt, but it doesn't matter. Ultimately, Ishin owes his life to Masaki. He is not going to let her die because he has some doubts. Through this action, you can see that he earns the respect of Ryuken. 
When he enters into Masaki's inner world, he iconically tells her that he is here to protect her. After he saves her, Ishin had no choice but to remain within the human world. And thanks to the help of Urahara, Ishin was able to adjust his life accordingly, and thus open up a clinic so that he could earn a living to support his family. After marrying Masaki, they had three children, and the Hollow White was transferred to Ichigo. And a few years later, Masaki ended up being killed by the Grand Fisher when Ichigo was nine years old. This now takes us to the present timeline of the story. During the first arc of the story, Ishin plays his role as a goofy father, but he does take part in a couple of notable events during this arc. The first of which is after Ichigo fails to defeat the Grand Fisher. In chapter 25, Ishin finds Ichigo at Masaki's grave. They comment on how many years have passed since the death of Masaki. During this discussion with his son, he proves that he isn't as oblivious as he appears to be. He reminds Ichigo that Masaki is only going to be able to rest in peace if she sees that Ichigo is living his life to his fullest. Despite having given up smoking, we learn that he smokes at a gravesite on the anniversary of a death because as Masaki had complimented him once that he looked cool while smoking. Apparently, this was the only time that Masaki had ever complimented his looks, so he smokes in her memory. Ichigo is pretty gloomy in this instance, as he still feels very responsible for the death of his mother. But Ishin tells him to cheer up. Nobody blames Ichigo for the death of Masaki. It wasn't his fault that she died. Ishin is even proud of her, stating that the woman that he had loved had died while protecting her son. Ishin reminds Ichigo that Masaki had given her life for him, so in return, Ichigo should live a full life. In in one of his most memorable quotes, he tells Ichigo to live well, age well, and to go bald well, and to ensure that he dies after he does, and if he can, in his final moments, to die smiling. If Ichigo continues to sulk and blame himself, then Ishin states he doesn't know how he will be able to face Masaki. This discussion between father and son is one of my favourite moments within Bleach, and it's one that I haven't spoken much about, because I wanted to save it for this video in particular. It's a rare moment where we see a very mature side to Ishin, where he isn't joking. He reassures his son while simultaneously dropping such a memorable quote that I'm sure has stuck with all of us ever since we had first heard it. Towards the end of the Substitute Shinigami arc, when Ichigo states that he is going on a trip during the summer, we know that Ishin is kind of aware of what he is doing, as he hands over to Ichigo a protective charm. In his own roundabout way, he tells Ichigo to return home safely when he orders him to return this protective charm back to him when he comes home. Despite Ishin not being able to see Hollows or Ichigo when he is donning his Shinigami attire, I'm sure that Urahara was probably filling him in on all of the events that were taking place, and it's for this reason in particular that he gives Ichigo a protective charm before he goes to the Soul Society. And in this way, we can see that a very important parallel exists between Ishin and Rukia. We know that Ishin had decided to lose his Shinigami powers for the sake of Masaki, while Rukia had accidentally lost her powers to Ichigo. Ishin had of course abandoned the Soul Society for Masaki's sake, while his son Ichigo goes to the Soul Society in order to rescue Rukia. It's a very nice parallel parallel that exists between Ichigo and Rukia and Masaki and Ishin. As we know, during the Soul Society arc, Ishin doesn't have much of a role within the story, aside from having his powers returned back to him after Ichigo attains his Bankai. And in chapter 182, after Ichigo returns, Ishin tries to attack him while he is in bed, but Ichigo is able to block the attack. Ishin ends up praising Ichigo, thus in a funny way proving that Ishin was only attacking Ichigo in order to strengthen him, and Ichigo being able to block his father proves that he has come a long way, especially after all of the events of the Soul Society arc. This of course takes us to the Aranka arc, where we first see Ishin appear as a Shinigami, in a moment that I know left me feeling speechless when I would first seen it. And it's even more impactful when you learn that the first enemy that Ishin defeats after gaining his powers back is Grand Fisher, the hollow that was responsible for killing his wife. And it is in this scene that we learn that Ishin is a captain level Shinigami. A lot of people believe that Ichigo should have been the one to kill the Grand Fisher, but personally I think the one who had fallen in love with with Masaki was the best choice to avenge her death, by killing the Hollow that was responsible for it. Ishin had dealt with the Grand Fisher who was directly responsible for Masaki's death, while during the Thousand Year Blood War arc, Ichigo was also able to avenge the death of his mother in his own way, by defeating Yuha Bak who was indirectly responsible for it. In chapter 188, Urahara appears before Ishin after he defeats the Grand Fisher. In one of the most memorable encounters of the entire series, he asks Ishin if he feels better after defeating the Grand Fisher. He states that he guesses so, but the truth is that he was never bitter, because hollows do what hollows do. The only thing that he regrets over the last 20 years is that he couldn't save Masaki that night. Urahara comments that he hasn't
it changed a bit and that his son is just like him. Urahara then states that just as Ishin had predicted, the Vizards have contacted Ichigo, revealing that as early as chapter 188, Ishin had known about Ichigo's inner hollow. They then comment upon how Aizen is utilizing the Hokyoku to strengthen the Arankas and that he is most likely preparing for war and that all the parties involved, including the Vizards and even the Soul Society will be dragged into this battle. Now, Ishin doesn't play much of a role during the Hueco Mundo arc, aside from at the start of it in chapter 241, where he admits that he hasn't been a good father to Ichigo. Now, Ishin has his most significant role within the story during the fake Karakuro Town arc, where he appears before Ichigo in his Shinigami attire, proving that he is a badass Shinigami and not some goofy father. One of his best moments in the entire series occurs in chapter 398, when he sends Aizen crashing through several buildings after a flick of his finger. During their battle, Ishin is able to bring Aizen to the very limits of a Shinigami, and it is at this point during their fight where Aizen's soul begins to be reformed, as he states that the Hokyoku has understood Aizen's will and is now fulfilling his desire. During their fight, they are later accompanied by the arrival of Urahara. Both Urahara and Ishin begin to simultaneously attack Aizen after he transforms. They are also accompanied by Yuriichi as the three of them work together against Aizen. In chapter 405, Ishin reveals that he too is able to use the Getsuga Tensho, but at this point, Aizen is too powerful to be affected by such a technique, as his Ryatsu has now become unreadable. Aizen swiftly defeats Urahara, Yuriichi, and Ishin and leaves for the real Karakura Town. When Ishin recovers, he shakes some sense into his son, as he tells him to open up a Senkaimon so that they can follow Aizen. In this moment, he reaffirms Ichigo's purpose to protect Karakura Town, as he knows of a way to defeat Aizen. Ishin holds back the currents of the Dangai in order for Ichigo to enter into Jinzen and to ask Zangetsu about the final Getsuka Tensho. In chapter 409, Ishin comments that the final Getsuka Tensho is a technique that their Zanpakuto will not want to teach them, as he recalls his own experiences with his own Zanpakuto and Getsu. After Ichigo attains the ability, he arrives in the real Karakura town within the Soul Society with an unconscious Ishin over his shoulder. After placing his father underground, Ichigo thanks him as he begins his battle against Aizen, thus ending Ishin's involvement within the fake Karakura town arc. Now, during the Fullbring arc, Ishin's role within the story is very shady. In fact, it's very similar to how Urahara even turns away from Ichigo. It's very confusing until you know the purpose behind their actions. Like in chapter 441 when Ichigo is walking home and he sees Ishin stood with Urahara and when Ishin notices Ichigo's presence, he tells Urahara to move to a place where they can discuss privately. In chapter 448, there are more hints as to what Ishin and Urahara are doing behind the scenes. They are in Urahara's store as a mysterious figure steps forth from the shadows. The Shinigami appears to be inserting their Ryatsu into a large glowing container. In chapter 454, we see Ishin carrying a glowing sword-like object under the moonlit sky with Urahara. The reasons behind their vague and pensive nature is explained after Ichigo loses his full ring abilities. When he is stabbed, he looks behind to see Urahara and Ishin, and he questions whether if Tsukushima is controlling them too. But Ishin directs him to look at who had stabbed him, and gradually as Ichigo's powers return to him, he is able to see that Rukia was the one wielding the sword that had stabbed Ichigo, thus returning his powers back to him. We then see Ishin and Urahara knock Chad and Orihime unconscious, as they begin to have a mental breakdown from Tsukushima's abilities. After taking them to Urahara's store, Urahara tells Ishin to stay behind, as he returns to the battlefield, as they comment upon Ichigo learning the truth behind the substitute Shinigami title and the badge that he has been carrying. Now, as far as Ishin's involvement during the Thousand Year Blood War arc is concerned, he confronts Ichigo after he is thrown out of the Soul King's palace. We learn that Ishin was kept up to date about what is happening within the Soul Society by Urahara, as he deduces that Ichigo was sent back home by the Royal Guards. It is here that the Everything But The Rain flashback arc takes place, where Ishin reveals to Ichigo the truth about his heritage, revealing that he is not only a Shinigami, but he is also a Quincy. Ichigo also here learns the true reason behind the death of Masaki, and how Yuhabak was responsible for it. In chapter 537, Ichigo thanks his father for relaying to him the truth about his life, thus ending a plot thread that was established as early as chapter 398 where Ishin had first appeared before Ichigo as a Shinigami. During the fake Karakuro Town arc, Ishin had stated that Ichigo may have a lot of questions for him, but they will have to wait until later. But Ichigo had stated that he has no questions to ask him, because there must have been a reason why Ishin had been so secretive, and he must have had a reason for not telling Ichigo that he was a Shinigami. Ichigo doesn't force his father to tell him anything here. He is confident that Ishin will explain to him everything when the time is right. When Ishin had made his appearance during the fake Karakuro Town arc, he had actually interrupted Aizen about to reveal to Ichigo everything that he knows about him, as he had said to Ichigo that he is a human and a, and before he can finish his sentence, Ishin appears.
Empires. And the sentence that Aizen was about to say is completed during the Thousand Year Blood War arc, where we learn that Ichigo is a human and a Quincy. And it is further cemented this idea that Ishin's character is a tool of foreshadowing that Kubo utilizes. Later, Ishin and Ryu can do arrive within Waha World at the end of the Thousand Year Blood War arc. They were able to create a portal and travel to Waha World thanks to an item that had belonged to Uryu's grandfather, Soken Ishida. The two of them unfortunately don't really get involved in any of the combat, with Ishin's role being limited to accompanying Ryuken as he hands over to his son the still silver arrowhead. I think if the Thousand Year Blood War arc didn't have such a rushed ending, then we would have seen them utilize more of their abilities, and even had a chance to see Ishin's Bankai. But unfortunately, this is the only disappointment that I have in relation to Ishin's character, his lack of involvement during the Thousand Year Blood War arc. Now, the last point that I want to mention is about Ishin Zanbakdo. Now, there was some debate about how Ishin knows Getsuga Tensho, and how he has the knowledge of the final Getsuga Tensho. I'd always theorized that the Zanpakuto and the abilities that Ichigo and his father have are inherited from the Shiba clan, thus explaining why their Zanpakuto spirits sound so alike, with Ishin having Engetsu while Ichigo has Zangetsu, and so these abilities and techniques are passed down through the Shiba clan. Ishin is another excellent character written by Kubo. He has a perfect character design, and his demeanor is very stoic and mysterious. This is at its peak during the Fullbring arc, but by default he is a very goofy character, especially when he is around his kids, and his character is involved in a lot of satisfactory moments, especially during the Aranka arc when he first appears as a Shinigami, and especially during the fake Karakorotan arc where Ichigo learns that his father is more than just this goofy character. Ishin, similar to Yuri Ichi, had abandoned his noble lineage. He had abandoned his position as a captain, and he had done all of this for the Quincy that had saved his life. So, like Urohara, what did you think about this exiled Shinigami? Do you love Ishin's character as much as I do? If there are any points that I forgot to mention about his character, then definitely leave a comment and let me know. But this is everything that I have on Ishin Shiba or Ishin Kurosaki. Once again, thank you for making it to the end of the video and I can't wait to see you in my next Bleach character analysis. If you enjoy my content, then you can support my channel through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, or even through YouTube by becoming a channel member. You will gain access to exclusive channel perks and a Discord server which I frequently use. So become a member of my Zero Division and be the first to know about my upcoming videos. And once again, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.